Okay, um, today I want to go over something called usury or usurious loans. So um, let's go ahead and click on this and go to this website. And usury is basically uh, an interest rate that is considered to be excessive as compared to market interest rates. Um, and one example, and sometimes it's called predatory lending. Uh, one, one thing that this article talks about is payday lenders. Uh, by the way, this is an Investopedia. I just looked up usury rate. Um, it talks about payday lenders. They provide high interest loans. They're often accused of being predatory. Um, so, you know, the, the question is, uh, it says right here, defenders of payday loans argue that the high interest rates are justified by the fact that the loans they provide carry unusually high risk. You know, someone willing to go do a payday loan to pay that type of interest might be risky, right? So they have to charge a higher interest rate. So, um, so what I want to do is let's just go ahead and do an example. So I, I went here to this website here, uh, incharge.net. By the way, let me let me uh, move this to the right. So I went to this 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 website, and uh, I've never done a payday loan. So, but it says here that. Payday, uh, payday lenders usually uh, they they uh, lend you money, and then in two typically in two weeks you pay pay it back, usually with a you know with a a post dated check or something like that, and they typically charge fifteen to twenty dollars for every hundred hundred dollars borrowed. So um, uh, what I'd like to do is. Uh, Let's do an example and figure out what the actual interest rate is that you're paying. So we, we can say we're given, uh, so we'll do a typical time value money problem. And we're given, uh, we'll give the number of periods, the rate, the present value, the payment, and the future values. So this is a typical time value money problem. And it says over here in this example, typically it's two weeks. So I'll go two uh weeks and the rate is what we don't know we're going to calculate this rate and we'll say that we're going to we'll just use a hundred dollars so they're going to, so we're gonna well we could do it either way we'll say we're getting a hundred dollars so i'll say i'm getting a hundred dollars we're not going to make any payment but then at the end of two weeks we're going to pay back so my cash flow is going to be a minus 120 so i'm going to pay back 120 Right, I'm going to pay my additional hundred dollars plus it says here's 15 to 20 so so that's what's going on and we want to find um, let's say uh, we want to find our uh, and we want to find what the what it, how much the interest rate is per week and then uh, we want to find our uh, what the equivalent of that would be uh, apostrophe per year right so that'd be like an APR an APR right so for a solution um, let's go ahead and and we'll calculate the first R we use the rate so I'll equal I'll use the rate function in Excel so I'll go rate equals rate the number of periods is a uh, two weeks right in fact, the number of periods that go up here two, and I'm going to skip. And I hit comma and ask for the payment, not, which is zero in this case. I hit comma again and ask for the present value, which is I'm going to get a hundred dollars. In the future, I'm going to pay a hundred twenty back. And it asks you to, uh, if it's this type, don't worry about guess. If I don't guess, I'm going to assume it's zero. I'll assume it's zero, and I'll use that as a guess. It has to solve it iter iteratively. And normally with Excel, it rounds off percent, so it's a good idea to take it out a couple places. So that, that's my weekly rate. Okay, and so let me put the formula in here. And the way this rate formula works, you have to have one cash flow negative and one positive. You can't get $100 and get 120 You have to get 100 and then give 120 back, right? So this won't, this won't come out, right, unless I have uh, one of those one of those uh, one of those negative and one positive okay so 
So, um, so what we could do, I'm going to, I'm kind of to find the yearly rate. I'm going to do it the shortcut method and I'll show you the long way why, why it makes sense. So this R would be equal to this, the, um, parentheses one plus this, uh, weekly interest rate to the 52 power because it's 52 weeks minus one. And that's just the equation. And I have to format that as percent. So the yearly rate is a mind boggling one eleven thousand three hundred and forty seven percent. Right. Um so that doesn't make sense. So let's let's just you know it's hard to believe it it's that high, right? That you know if you this would be like, you know, you know, for a mortgage, your mortgage is is you know has probably gone up recently, but over for the for the for a long time it's been four percent or something if you have good credit, right? Here's eleven thousand three hundred and forty seven point five percent. That seems too high, so let's check it. So we could say uh, period, and we go one, and we'll go beginning balance, and we'll go interest paid, and then the ending balance, right? And uh, since this is 52 weeks, I'll go to, and I'll copy these two, and drag it down until it says 52. And so we're starting out, uh, it's going to be equal to $100, right? And the interest, the weekly interest rate is this. So my interest is going to be $100 times this interest rate we just calculated, right? And I'm going to go ahead and F4 that because I'm going to copy this formula down and I always want it to point to that interest rate. And then my ending balance is going to be equal to this plus this, right? So at the end of the first week, I owe $109.54. So my beginning balance in my next period is going to be my ending balance of that period. And then I could, and then if I carry that over, the next period I owe ten forty six. If I copy that down, the ending balance is 120 which is, that makes sense, over two weeks. Uh, at the end of two weeks, I owe 120 But if we keep going with that, if I put it all the way down to the bottom, and then we're going to have to auto fit these because he's going to be larger in the bottom. Um, you can see at the end end of uh, 52 weeks, this would be the balance. So it grows quite quickly at that interest rate. Now we have to subtract out. Uh, we have to subtract out our initial because because we got that, so we can't. So we don't have to pay that back. This is going to be equal to this plus this. And if you read this as percent, that's why I use 100. You can see that it's 11,347.55%, 11, which is exactly what we calculated here, right? So it is actually true that, that if, if you carried that that's the interest rate you would be paid if you carry if you left that ride if the payday place let you ride it and without ever paying it at that interest rate that's what it would be so the question is that called is that called usury or is that a usurious loan well you know like i say the defendants say well we have to charge a high of a rate because it's, these people are risky individuals but it basically tells you you would never want to get into a payday loan because Pretty much, they the experts say you end up pretty much having to borrow from relatives to get out of your payday loan. So, you probably a good idea not to get into payday loan in the first place, um, just because of that. So, hopefully that was interesting. Um, if you like, if you like this video, my picture is going to come up. You click on that picture. You can subscribe to my channel if you want to, if you haven't already. Uh, like the video if you like it. Give me a comment. What did you think of that? So that's it for today. Thanks for watching.